Okay, I'm going to show you guys a complex definition of sine and cosine. And first, we're going to start off with the Euler's formula, e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And we are going to plug in z and negative z into theta, and we'll come up with two equations. First, let me plug in z into all the theta, so we will have e to the i z, and this is equal to cosine z right here, and then plus i sine z, like this. And next, I will plug in negative z into all the theta. So we will have right here, e to the i. I plug in negative z right here, and let me write it down as negative z like this. And then we will have equal to cosine negative z right here into this theta, plus i, and then sine and negative z right here into this theta. All right? And from here, we will be able to solve for cosine z and sine z. All right? Let's do the cosine z first. And I'm going to just keep the first equation as how it is. I will write down this part first, all right? So we will have cosine z plus i sine z. And this is equal to e to the i z, right? So let me just put this down right here. And then for the second equation, let me put down this part first. But we know cosine of negative z is actually what? This is just the same as cosine z, because if you have to look at the Taylor series of cosine in the complex world, all the powers are even. So when you have negative z raised to an even power, you still get the same result as if you have just z inside, right? So this right here is even, just like the real case. We will have cosine z right here. And similarly, when we have sine negative z. This is the same as negative sine positive z, because, same thing, Taylor series of sine in the complex world, you have all the odd powers, so you can take the negative to the front. So we have negative i sine z, and this is equal to that, e to the negative i z, okay? And from here, what can we do? Well, we can just add these two equations together, and you see, they will cancel, and cosine z plus cosine z, of course, we get 2 cosine z, and this is equal to this plus that, e to the i z plus e to the negative i z, isn't it? At the end, divide both sides by 2, namely, we will get cosine z equals to e to the i z plus e to the negative i z, all over 2. And this right here, it's a complex definition of cosine z. Does this form look familiar to you guys? It should, because this is very similar to the cosh x, the hyperbolic cosine x. Because hyperbolic cosine x is e to the, uh, e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2, right? Really, really similar. So this is the cosine z in the complex world. And now, how can we get sine z? Well, we are still going to utilize these equations. Let's look at this right here. I'm going to keep the first equation as how it is, so I'll do this one in blue. Let me write it down. We have cosine z plus i sine z equal to e to the i z. No problem on this. And for the second equation, I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1 so that the cosine z factors will be one positive, the other one is negative, right? So let me multiply negative 1 throughout this right here. So you will have negative cosine z. Negative times negative becomes positive i sine z. And this is equal to negative e to the negative i z. From here, same thing. Add this up, this will be gone. i sine z plus i sine z, we have 2i sine z. And this is equal to this and that, e to the i z minus e to the negative i z, right? Okay, at the end, divided by 2i on both sides. So we will have sine z equals to that, e to the i z minus e to the negative i z, all over 2i. Here is the complex definition of sine z, all right? So this is really, really cool, isn't it? Good.